thousands of advice of how to come closer and closer to Hashem been given in the world to the truth seekers along the years. Endless number of advice been given. Some of the advice worked for a couple of hours, some of the advice worked for a couple of days, some of the advice worked for a couple of years, but none of the advice helped completely. And for an example, you can say on every one of the mitzvot that they are amazing, that the mitzvot, it, they are they're working, you can say that the mitzvot are not good advice, like the Zara Kadosh is calling the mitzvot, it didn't have been good advice. People over there need some, uh, some advice about the curtain. So, uh, many people will follow the advice of the Torah and will say, wow, that's amazing, for sure it works, what, to keep Shabbat, it doesn't work, it works, but you see many people that are trying to keep those mitzvot and in the end of the day, they're still not finding the happiness that they were wishing to, to find. Okay, so you read in the Zohar Kadosh, amazing things about mikveh, okay, great, mikveh is important for men, for women, great, whatever, so you go and you go and you go every day before of dawn and you do the best you can. Amazing, fantastic. But in the end of the day, after three years, seven years, sixteen years, that you go daily to the mikveh and you look at yourself from head to toe and where is that change that I was yearning to? Where, 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 where is it? Chatzot, wake up midnight, in the middle of the night. You're going to wake up the dawn, you're going to say Birkot HaShachar, great, and you do that one week, one month, and you know what, you're a real Hasid Breslev, and for one year and a half you wake up every night in the middle of the night, exactly in the Kudat Chatzot, in the point of midnight, you woke up, and then after one year and a half you look back and, okay, so where is my relationship with my wife? Where is the peace in the house? Where is the family? Where, is my, where are my children? I, I can never meet them. I don't see them. I'm waking up in different hours. They're alive in different hours. It's like two different planets in the same, like, same house. What's going on? Is that the real intention? Was that the real advice? So you see that the advice can be amazing and no one can argue. No one, no one allowed to argue. <laughs> no one allowed to open his mouth. We're too religious for Hashem, that's our problem. We're too religious. We forgot. <laughs> the main advice, if you want to be close to Hashem, you don't need to go nowhere. You need to understand that Hashem is with you. The fact that Hashem is with us, that's the main advice. To focus on the fact that Hashem is with you, that's the main advice. To try to go and to seek for Hashem, to go and try to look for Hashem. Okay, where is Hashem? You're already denying the existence of the Creator. When you think that the love, that the relationship, that the connection of the Creator to you depends in your actions, you're already saying something wrong, something bad about Him. Because you're limiting Him. Because you're saying with your own mouth that only if you will be righteous enough, so then He will be there for you, He will protect you. And you can find verses to confirm that and to prove that and to agree on that. And you can find rabbis that will agree with you on that. And you can find very radical people that will tell you that it all depends on your actions and corresponding to how much that you're going to sacrifice, that's how much you're going to receive and be rewarded. And great, but still, I'm telling you and I'm warning you, there is a very big misinterpretation of the will of Hashem. It's true, 
In this world, when you want to express something, when you want to explain something, you need to bring it down into words. And the words, they have that nature of limiting the intention. They're putting it in a certain size, in a certain measure, certain number of letters that are going to contain certain number of words that will build certain number of, 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 of sentences, verses that will cover that subject, but still there is much more to say. And that's why in every generation, the wise people, the righteous people of that generation, they still have that privilege from heaven to reveal the Torah that is not allowed to be written. The Torah Shebe'al Peh, the Torah that has been given to the next generation by the wise people that met the righteous people of the last generation. And they received from them the wisdom, which was the... If it's not allowed to be written, it's not allowed to be said. How can it be that things that have been said has not been written? It's not an option. For sure that everything that is allowed to be said is allowed to be written. If I just now gave a class, every one of you are allowed to write whatever I said. And even if I'm going to speak Kabbalah, and if Rav Mordechai Sha'abi was talking to his students, and he was teaching them secrets of Kabbalah, every one of them, every, every individual was able to sit and write all of the combinations and the names and the numeral values and the right intentions and exactly what and when and how and which, everything. If it been said, that's it. It's public. It's allowed to be used. It's allowed to be written. So what is that secret Torah that's been given to the wise to hand it to the next generation? It's that understanding, very deep understanding of the wise people that can understand the intention of the Creator. That they can understand that to every person you need to give different guidings. That everyone must find the path that through that path he will find his way back home. And everyone are different. Because two people will go every day to the mikveh and one of them will feel such an amazing inspiration and light and wow, it's amazing and fantastic. And to the other person, it will just going to close the doors of tshuva. He will feel, why in the world I need to have that custom, that minhag of going to the mikveh daily? I hate it. I can't stand it. Can I wash myself at home? It's going to be so much nicer for me. I don't want to go to the mikveh. Okay, before of Yom Kippur, okay, I can hear you. But daily, I can't stand it. It's too hard for me for so many reasons. So for him, really, if you're going to try to push him to go to the mikveh daily, you killed him. You killed that tiny spark that was already shining a little bit and you depressed it. Because you tried to push him too hard. If you put too much oil... That oil will shut off the, 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 the wick, the, the flame of the, of the candle. The candle will, will drown and the flame will disappear. But it's a very quality and pure and, and clean oil made out of the first olives. I understand you. From the holy land of Israel. Yeah, I hear you. And the, 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 the wick drown. So what are you going to do now? It's dead. So you need, as a wise person, to have that understanding. Who is that person that is standing in front of you? And we, in this generation, that we are trying to look for those righteous people, for those amazing, inspiring rabbis that will illuminate the way for us, and we cannot find them. Because the truth, we miss it. We're looking for it all over the place. And you hear one rabbi and you say, wow, it's amazing. And then you hear another thing and you say, okay, but i rather watch myself from him. And then you say, okay, maybe that path. And you say, okay, I'll try. And you try and then you wake up in the next day or in the next year and you say, it doesn't work. It doesn't fit into my life, into my family's life, into my, my, to my, my craziness. I'm crazy, but still I need to serve Hashem. So it doesn't work. So every individual got that obligation from heaven to judge himself and to check his own pulse and his own power and abilities. 
Because if you don't have the power to do certain things that other people can do easily, but if you really don't have that power, so it cannot be that you are also commanded and must do that thing with them, even if you're part of the public. The word tzibu is written, tzadik betresh, tzibu, public, is saying to us, coming to teach us, that in that tzibu, in that public, you have tzaddikim, righteous people, beinonim, medium people, average people, and rashaim, and evil people. So you can also join to that public, even if you're rasha, even if you're evil, even if you're in the lowest level of them all, that you can't stand the shul, and you don't feel like it to learn Torah, and you don't want to hear no rabbis, but you... Love Hashem, and you're crazy, you're violent, and you're angry, and you're upset, and you drink alcohol, and you smoke drugs, and you like to see violence movies, and you're crazy, you are sick in your mind, no doubt about it, you're crazy, 100%. Also, you have the documents to approve it. You're crazy, you lost your mind when you were 14. Okay, great. Now, you cannot come and join Am Yisrael in a way. You cannot do your part, you cannot support, you cannot give charity, you cannot pray for your people, you cannot wash your hands in the morning if that's what you feel like doing, you cannot put your talit, tzitzit, talit katan, under your, your shirt and, and, and just be a Jew, you can't do it. Why? Because you can't stand shul, because you don't feel like putting filin. If you cannot put filin, so it means you cannot eat kosher? If you cannot eat kosher, so it means that you're not supposed to keep Shabbat, or you're not allowed to keep Shabbat, or join a minyan, The fact that you're not able to keep something, the fact that you don't find that strength, that power inside of you to keep all of the Torah mitzvot completely, does it reject you completely? No way! It's so hard! And especially for people like us that came from such far place, such distance. Until the age of 20, I didn't know anything about Torah mitzvot. I didn't know anything. If you would ask me what it means, the word Mishnah, I didn't know what you're talking about. I didn't know what Mishnah is. What's Mishnah? I didn't know what's Mishnah. I didn't know what the Mishnah is. What is it? Is it a book? Is it a, is it a, what's that Mishnah? I don't know. I couldn't even think if you would tell me, okay, try to think. I wouldn't come to nothing. I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't know what it means, Netilat Yadayim, to wash your hands. I didn't know what it means, Talit, I didn't know, strings. I didn't know, Shabbat. I didn't know, Kashrut. I didn't know. No one knew. For us, kasher, it mean, was, was, it, we thought that kasher means to eat kosher, means not to eat um, ham, pig, okay? Not to eat lobsters. We didn't know. More than that, we didn't know. Sharks, okay. Lions, you're not allowed to eat a, a, a lion. Okay, great, it's not kosher. But if it's a cow, we didn't know about rules of kashrut. We didn't know about halachic slaughter, or, uh, you need to slaughter the animal in a kosher way. We didn't know. All of those ideas, all of those um, concepts, all of those words were foreign for us. We never thought, they never crossed our minds. It was never part of our life, of our culture, of our, 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 our childhood. We never grew up on those verses. Tehillim, who, who was King David? Who is Olam Avinu? We heard about him in some children books, maybe. Learned in, in school, secular school, some stories from an ancient day. We didn't know if it was a fairy tale or reality or that it was mixed. We didn't know. So now a person that grew up like that with no real solid knowledge about Torah, about the importance of, of, of the Torah, the fact that the, the Creator revealed Himself to, to His nation, that He chosen us, that He revealed Himself on Mount Sinai, something so amazing that happened, that never happened before. And then He gave us the Ten Commandments. Who cared? We didn't talk about those things at all. So now take a person that never heard about those things and tell him, now you're obligated. Now you need to wake up before of dawn. You're crazy, you lost your mind. It's not an option. You need to wake me up. You need to help me. You need to talk to me in the language that I understand. I'm going to concerts. To, I like, I'm a fan of rock bands. I, I do drugs. What are you talking about? I'm dating. I have so many meetings. I have a huge business running. What? Who? What? Who are you? 
who are you? What are you talking about? So now can you come and judge that person and tell him, okay, now, because you're secular, because you're a parent, you know why my parents didn't educate me on the, on the, on the, on the holy path of Judaism? There's a reason for that. Maybe it's because of the Holocaust. Maybe it's because of the exile. Maybe it's because the day lost their hope because of something. My mother once told me when she heard that I'm a Breslever, that I'm talking to Hashem, she said to me, you know, I also spoke once with Hashem. I told her, wow, yes, when, when it happened. She said, when I was 14, when she was 14 years old, and her father, my grandfather, passed away, so I went out from my house to the backyard, and I screamed to Hashem, you took my father, I will never going to speak to you ever again. That was her one conversation with Hashem. When she was 21, just for you to know, she lost her first husband. He was a pilot in Tzahal, in the IDF, and he been killed. The Egyptians shot his airplane, and he left her a widow with two orphans, two babies, one three months years old, and one one year and a half. And that's how she started her life. Okay, so now you're going to judge her on not believing in Hashem? Come on, are you crazy? How can you judge a person that don't believe in Hashem? The reason that people don't believe in Hashem, that people cannot recognize the Creator, is only because that He Himself, that loving Creator, is hiding His face from them. Like that Moshe said, You turned your face away from them. How can you blame them when you're hiding your face from them? So now, if we are the result of the fact that the Creator Himself decided to hide His face from our ancestors already 2,000 years ago, what can we do about it? How can you judge Him? Maybe you can judge the righteous ones, maybe the leaders of this generation, maybe, maybe, maybe you can judge them on not shining enough or not being positive enough, or not being friendly enough, inviting, in, I don't know, maybe. Probably they also have the reasons to be afraid, and to be so charedim, and terrified, and closing themselves. They also grew up in the exile. They were also trying to protect their, 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 their um, tribes, their communities, from, from evil inclination, from foreign cultures. Okay, I can also judge them favorably. Those leaders of our generation are not being mekavim or not inviting. Maybe you can judge them, but also you cannot, because probably they also have their reasons. So now, what can you do with a person that doesn't have no understanding, doesn't have no will, doesn't have no understanding and, and senses, doesn't have no emotions to the Torah? How can you judge him? You cannot. So what can you do? First of all, understand him. But like that we said before, you as a person with a kingship, a leader, a father in the house, a mother in the house, someone with power, with authority, okay, great. You have that obligation to go and spread the truth, your understanding, your wisdom, your charm, the light that you received from heaven to your beloved ones, to your followers, to your circles, to the ones that are close to you. But you as an individual, someone that doesn't have no power, just a random person in the street that feels so far and neglected, you have only one thing that you are obligated to do, is to try to find yourself. Is to try to find your own connection to the Creator, and based on that, you can start building something. If you will try to follow advice of other people, you're just going to lose your mind moving from this community to that community, from that neighborhood to that neighborhood, from that city to that city, from that area to that area, and you're going to go lower and lower, and you're going to lose your inner connection with the Creator. First of all, the most important thing in building a relationship that's based on love and trust with the Creator is to find your inner connection to Him. Really to find Him where that He takes place inside of you. Instead of trying to go out from our place and to reach Him that He is, where is He? No one can point, oh, there he is, okay, so I'm going to try. And then you find yourself over there. I remember once 
in uh, I saw as a child in Sesame Street the, the, the uh, what's the name of this uh, blue blue Muppet? What was his name? Groovy, we would call him in Hebrew. What was his name? No, uh, cookie not, not Cookie Monster. Not Cookie Monster. The skinny one, the, the anorexic one, the one that was the, didn't have Elmo. no AP. No, he couldn't eat no cookies. <laughs> not Elmo. He was not receiving no cookies. So, so he was... So he was running from one side to the other, and he was trying to explain far and close. He was, what? Ernie? No, no, no. Oh, that guy! <laughs> Grover. Grover. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> the link. You can do it as a... As a, as a he is doing it. Grover. So he was trying to explain far and, and close. So he's standing here, and he tells you, now I'm close. And then he's running 200 feet, and he's standing over there, and he's saying, and now I'm far, and you can't hear him, and now I'm far. And then he's running back. So you're like that. It's crazy. There was an Israeli person that wanted to, to apply for a job in, in America. So he came, and he, he met the boss, and the boss asked him, okay, how's your English? He said, my English, perfect. All right. <laughs> my English is perfect. It's, it's an interaction, an interactive uh, class. So, he said, yes, my English is perfect, no problem. And no, no. So, he said, okay, let's say that you, there's a client that comes to the store, and you want to tell him please, that, that he should come from the door to you. So, what are you going to tell him? So, he said, no problem. I'll tell him, come here, come here. Great. He said, okay, great. Now, if that customer is satisfied, everything is good, and now he needs to go, and you want to tell him, go over there, go to the door. So what you, how are you going to tell him to go to the door? He said, I'm going to go to the door, and I'm going to tell him, come here, come here. So we're that kind of people. We don't know what to do. We're going to the, oh, we heard about that amazing Beit Midrash. And over there, they're learning. And then you go to that Beit Midrash, and you sit, and you learn. And you don't understand what you're talking about. You say, okay, you know what? It's too advanced. It's too high for me. I'm going to try something else. And then you say, okay, oh, I heard that's Baal Batim. I'm going to learn over there. They're learning Dafa Yomi. It's easy. There is another class of Halachot every day. Perfect for me. That's the best Limud for me. Also, I'm going to catch Mincha, Mariv. Amazing. And then you go and you sit over there for one week, for two weeks, and you can't find yourself. And you say, you know what? I'm going to... No, I... Breslev, Breslev, I'm going to strengthen myself with my good points, Nekudot Ovot, I'm going to go with that, Rabbi Nachman. Great! And then you try that, and after two years, you look at yourself and you say, not Breslev, and I don't know no Halachot, and I don't do Anarit Bodadut, and I never catch a Minyan, and so, what's going to be? What's the deal with me? What's my solution? And if you're going to continue trying to find an external solution from some rabbi, from some place, from some book, from some person, from some community, from something external, outside of yourself, you're not going to find it. You're just going to go lower and lower and lower because you misinterpret the intention of the Creator by calling you my son. Because when He called you my son and He gave you a soul, He actually told you, you are connected to me from inside. From your spiritual side, from your inner side, your connection is through your soul. And your soul is unique. And no one else got that soul. And no one else got the, in the, the permission even to see your soul or to understand your soul. Because your soul is your own soul that's been given only to you by your Father, Father in Heaven. That He is our Father. And He carved a path, a way, a channel for every one of us to connect ourselves to Him from inside. Not from outside. From our outside, everything is the same. When we're putting tefillin, it's the same tefillin. When we're keeping Shabbat, it's the same Shabbat. When we're standing and praying the prayer, it's the same prayer. 
when you cover your head, it's not important how you cover your head. I'm telling you, it's not important. It's not important how you cover your head. It's not important if your beard is long or short. It's not important the, 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 the length of your side curls. If you have a long jacket or a short jacket, if you have a tilt chelet, a, a bright blue thread of, 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 of chelet on your tzitzit or that you are all white, even you can dye every string in a different color, the rainbow colors, it's logically okay and it's allowed. So it's not important if you are holding in such high levels that you feel the difference or that you want to follow your ancestors or your amazing angel rabbi. Okay, you're too crazy for me. I'm not arguing with you. You're going to be the last one that's going to admit in his mistake and you're going to come. But as for now, we're going to crown you as the Mashiach, the ultimate Mashiach, and you're great. Follow that light that you claim to have. I don't see that light. I don't believe that that light exists because to say that that light exists, it means to say that we, the rest of the people, are not able to enjoy from what that you are able to enjoy. Because I'm not close to you, Rabbi. I'm not part of your community. I don't speak your language. I don't have your accent. I've never been taught Yiddish. I don't know those things. So how can it be? That Father in heaven, he loves me in an equal way, in the same way like he loves you. And if you're going to say, you're right, he loves me more, so I'm not arguing with you. So, okay, great, go, follow that light. I don't care. I'm happy for you. Enjoy. See you by then. See you next year. Who cares? See you in Oman. When you're going to lost your way and you won't know how to buy a SIM card in Oman, I'm going to help you. I'm gonna help you. Why? Because God gave me something special that He didn't give you, and He also gave you something special that He didn't give to me. The only way that we're gonna enjoy from each other is if we're gonna share. If I'm gonna smile to you from my place, and you're gonna smile to me from your place, but as long as you're gonna try to hold your wisdom and your wealth and, and, and your advice and your tradition to yourself, okay, keep it. Keep it. That's not the intention of the Creator. The Creator gave the Torah to all of Am Yisrael. Ke'ish echad ve'lev echad. As one person with one heart. And as long as we don't have that complete heart to accept everyone and to love everyone, so we cannot be one. So first of all, you must accept yourself. That's the beginning. How am I going to accept myself? After waking up, from being drunk for the first 20 years of my life. How am I going to accept myself on not breaking Shabbatot, so many Shabbatot, on not eating kosher, on eating every animal that just was being served in every authentic restaurant in the world? How am I going to accept myself after violating all the Ten Commandments, after sinning in so many horrible sins that the Torah is saying that those kind of people don't have a share in the world to come? How am I going to accept myself? Only based on the wisdom that never been written before. Only based on that wisdom that been given to the righteous people in every generation to tell us, to tell you, to tell me, you still have hope. Because the love of the Creator to His children is an unconditional love. A love that is not dependent in no actions. If you woke up at 5 or you woke up at 10 or you just woke up, and it's 9.30 or 9.45 p.m., there's no problem. Hashem, He loves you. Hashem, He is with you, first of all. Now you can build. Now if you understand that Father in Heaven, He loves you, He cares about you, that love that you feel from Him will give you the strength, the push, the power to make another step toward Him as well, from your place. But if you will feel that you're always being judged and that you're always being criticized and always being measured and always, always being checked, you will refuse to progress to that direction. You're going to feel rejected. You're going to say, no, 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 I'm sorry. That's not for me. And it can take you one year and it can take you 10 years to wake up and to say, it's not for me. But in the end, you're going to wake up and you're going to refuse to being threatened and to be pushed because you cannot force spirituality. 
spirituality is something that must come from inside. When you want to educate your child, when you want to give your child tools for the future, if you will try to force him, you will break him. And as much as you're going to force, that's how much you're going to break. And you can kill him with the best intentions in the world. You can kill him. You can literally push him to commit suicide and kill himself because that you wanted him to be the next Rabbi Vadya Yosef, Rabbi Nachman of Westlev, Rav Shik, Marosh. Great. You wanted him to be as righteous as Rabbi El Yashiv, so you slaughtered him. Great. You think that that was the intention of Hashem? You think that that was the will of Hashem? You must educate that child according to his way. And he's got a way. And his way is to be lazy. And his way is to be upset and to be angry. And you need to wake him up to see that God is with him even when he's angry. Because if you're going to teach him that when he's angry, Hashem is not with him, and he's angry, because that's his way to express his emotions, to be angry. Now you told him, Hashem is not with you. So who rejected him? You! <coughs> Stupid parent! Why? Because you don't understand how much Hashem Barach is with him even when he's angry. And you misinterpret the real intention of Hashem by telling you, I love you. I love you in unconditional love. Love that is not dependent on anything. An endless love. Love of a father to his child. Not a terrified father, a stressful father that doesn't know what to do and he's all crazy. My child, he's not waking up in the morning. He didn't say Kiyach in the time. He didn't put feeling Rabbi Mutam. He's not doing this, he's not doing that. I'm doing tshuva now in front of you. I'm not embarrassed. I did thousands and thousands of mistakes with my five angels. I made horrible mistakes with my children. But except of telling them, hey guys, I love you. I'm sorry, I was wrong. I was under a lot of pressure. Let's try again. Let's restart. Let's do tshuva together. There's no other solution. If I'm going to continue pushing them, I'm going to lose them. What's the wisdom behind that? The Gemara is saying on Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia that Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia, he was a Tana. He was a genius. He was a torch of fire. He was a flaming fire. They're saying on him in the Gemara, it's written on him that he, I'm sorry, maybe it was not Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia. Maybe it was, I don't remember. Hashem will forgive me. Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia was one of the rabbis of Jesus in the time of the Gemara. I'm not remember. I don't remember if it was him that rejected him, Jesus, Yeshu, Anutzri. If it was him that rejected him or not. But there was that Tana in that generation. It was or Rabbi Yoshua ben Pirachia, or Rabbi Shimon ben Shatach, or one of those huge righteous people, the leaders of that generation, in the generation of Rabbi Akiva, that he was the teacher of Yeshu. And he rejected him. And after that he rejected him, so Yeshu decided to go and to do things that were against Judaism. That went off the way of the pure, mm, mm, straight path that we received by our ancestors. And to change his route and to go in a different direction. And the Gemara is rebuking that rabbi that if I'm not wrong, it was Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia, but maybe I am wrong, so it was someone else in the same amazing level, in the same amazing generation. And the Gemara, the Talmud, is, it was him, Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia. Thank God for Rabbi Google that came to assist in every situation. That he rejected Yeshu. And the Gemara is rebuking us and giving us a lesson. Don't be hard to your students that you won't make the same mistake like that Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia made while rejecting Yeshua Matsri, Jesus. Because look what happened because of that rejection. Now, all the fault, all, all of that mistake, of all of the bloodshed, of all of the sorrow, of all of the exile, on the head of Rabbi Yoshua ben Perachia. Can you understand that? It's written in the Gemara Kedasha. He was responsible in rejecting his student. Now you can say whatever. 
you can think that it's right, you can think that it's wrong, you can think that it was good, you can think that it was all for the good, you can think whatever you want. The Talmud is choosing that example, that situation mm -hmm. to wake us up not to reject our students. So if your student came now after Rosh Hashanah from Uman, and for you to be in Uman, it's to fall off the derech, it's not the right path, it's not the right way, so why won't you bring him back? Why won't you sit with him, Chavruta? Why won't you guide him? Why won't you hug him? Why won't you explain to him what you think that is better for him to do? Why are you going to kick him out from the yeshiva? Now you kicked him out from the yeshiva, and you think that he will not going to fall off the derech? Now you think that he will succeed more? It's crazy. You must show love. And when you show love, the student, your child, your follower, that person that is receiving from you, he will desire to come closer to you. If you will smile to him, if you will accept him with his lackings. And that's exactly what it, we are also saying to Hashem. We're refusing to be judged. We're refusing to be blamed. We want to build a relationship with you that is based on pure love. That's what we want from you. We want you to accept us as we are. We want you to shine. We want you to smile. We want you to show us your love. We want you to accept us. If Hashem accepted me, and that's the only reason, or at least the only reason that I can find, Maybe Hashem, probably Hashem got many, many reasons. The reason that I found why Hashem gave me this huge merit from heaven to be able to share and to explain and to teach, even though that I'm a Baal Shiva, that I came after 20 years of doing nothing in the borders of Dusha, in the area of purity, of, of, of keeping Torah Mitzvot. And He chose me today to speak to thousands of people on daily basis, online, and to meet so many people every day. Based on what? On the merit of my Bar Mitzvah, on the merit of my Brit Milah, on the merit of the Shabbatot that I was not keeping, on the lobsters that I was eating. Based on what? Based on what? Only based on one thing, that I know for sure that I'm not deserved to receive all of that bounty that I am for sure not worthy to hold that crown of Torah that been handed to me by Hashem. That I will be able now to speak with you as a rabbi that I don't even know the size of my shoes. That I need to remind myself the halachot and to ask Rabbi Google if it was Rabbi Yoshua ben Berachia or Rabbi Shimon ben Shatach. And that I don't know between right and left. But Hashem will use me. Why? Why Hashem will use me to save lives of people, even if I came from such far place, from such long distance? Only because, and only because, that I know for sure that the only reason that Hashem Barach brought me to come closer to Him was because of His loving kindness and not because of my greatness. Because when He woke me up, he woke me up from zero. When he took me out, he took me out of ashes, out of rock bottom. From that low place, he dragged me out. He carved my way out because of his mercy, because of his kindness. So me, as a clear evidence of the mercy and the kindness and the loving kindness, the endless love of the Creator, to wake up an ignorant person, a person that doesn't know any rules of Judaism, that doesn't have no reward based on no keeping, no Torah mitzvot at all. And I saw that he did such a huge favor with me to take me and to teach me Torah and to take me out from all of my nonsense, from all of my bad habits, from all of my lusts and my desires and my nonsense, and to wake me up to see the importance of keeping Torah mitzvot, on having faith, and gave me faith. 
and taught me how to trust him and how to call him and how to pray. So I have that gift from heaven that I still remember that, that it is all a free gift. That's why I have the merit to pass that wisdom to you. Because I'm not going to fool you. I'm not going to lie to you to think that I'm something that you need to follow. I'm zero. He is the only one you need to follow. And when you want to follow Him, you should do it from inside. With no external connection. You don't need no wires. You don't need no connections. You don't need nothing. You don't need no phone numbers of no important rabbis. You don't need no tens of thousands of dollars to give for Pidyon Nefesh. You don't need anything. You don't need to go to Uman. You don't need to keep Shabbat. Not don't keep Shabbat. Keep Shabbat. But your connection to Hashem is not dependent on keeping Shabbat or not. Your connection to Hashem depends on the fact that Hashem he loves you and He created you. That's it. And now, out of that understanding, you're going to run to keep Shabbat. You're going to want to keep Shabbat. You're going to say, wow, Hashem, you opened that door for me. Even though that I'm coming from such a far place, I must wash myself. I must clean myself. I must prepare myself. The appreciation that you will have to the Creator that brought you out of your darkness, out of your sadness, out of your confusions, will be much greater than the appreciation of a person that holds himself as a holy man with a pure legacy, with, with amazing foundations that years on years he was learning from the biggest rabbis of this generation in that important yeshiva. It's not the truth. It's not the truth. Do you know? I'm asking you. Do you know? No. Not hallucinating. Knowing. Do you know that you are better than me? Because you learned in a very, very important yeshiva, in the best yeshiva in Lakewood. Do you really think that you're better than me? I'm telling you that you're crazy. You lost your mind if you think that you're better than me. To tell you that I'm better than you? I don't know. I think that I know that now you're sitting, enjoying life, and I'm sweating for you, and you're not doing anything for me. That I know for sure. I know for sure that I'm sweating for Hashem. I know that I'm running like crazy to learn halachot. I know that I'm running crazy to find the right place for my children to learn Torah. I know that I'm putting a lot of effort in my Avodat Hashem to keep Shabbat and to eat kosher and to do one hour in Bodedut every day and to catch mikveh and to catch a minyan and to do the best that I can every moment of my life. I know that about myself now. If you know the same about yourself, so you're great, you're fine. You got A plus on trying, on doing the best that you can. To tell you what's your score, la mavet the results are only after death, only after 120. Then we're going to know exactly what you achieved, what I achieved. If you're going to ask me, I'm willing to give you all of my reward. And to prove that to all of you, I'm telling now in public to all of you, and also we have hundreds of people that are watching us now live on Facebook, that I am now giving up on all of my reward to the world to come. And you believe that words mean something. I am now, there is a Sefer Torah here, giving out to all of you all of my reward on all of the Torah that I learned, on all of thousands of hours of it, what they do that I did until today, that righteous people testified on me, that I spent thousands of hours of it, what they do, six hours, then another six, and one time, 18 hours straight, I was standing in front of Hashem. I'm just giving it to all of you now. It's yours, it's not mine. I'm giving it to you. Why? I don't care about that. I want you to have whatever you want. I'm not doing anything for a reward in the world to come. I don't need that. That my reward will be only to see that you succeeded. That that will be my share in the world to come. To know that you achieved something, that you received something from me, I want just to hear that. Once, it's enough for me. To know that I was able to do something good for you and I benefit your life, that something good happened to you because of my sweat, it's worth it. It's yours. For that, I'm running. 
For that I'm investing, for that I'm putting, for that I'm running, for that I'm, for that I'm not sleeping, from that I'm running like crazy from one side of the world to the other, that you will have a better relationship with your husband, that you will have a better relationship with your child, that you as a child will have a better way to see life without having the best relationship with your parents. That's my purpose in life. So I'm asking you, does the fact that you learned in the best yeshiva in Lakewood makes you better than me? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What that I am sure is that if you're going to run, you're going to make it. That if you're going to put your effort to the right direction, you're going to succeed. If you started from zero or if you started from very huge debts like I started with horrible debts, but you can achieve the heights. And no one in this world can judge you. Not the best supervisor of the highest yeshiva and not the biggest rabbi that everyone are, are following him and admiring him and giving him thousands of dollars and buying him an etrog in $7,000 etrog for Sukkot. He cannot judge you. He needs to have a lot of mercy in heaven when Hashem will judge him. Unless he is sweating 24-7 for Hashem. Unless he's running like crazy to save the children of the Creator. Once a friend of mine did a very big favor to one of my children. So I told that friend, listen, if you would do the same thing for me, I would appreciate you so much. You did a huge favor to my child. If you would do that favor to me, I would appreciate you so much. But the fact that you did that favor to my child, I can't even express to you how much I appreciate you. I'm going to remember that forever. Why? Because it's my child. Now, if I'm going to do something for Hashem, if I'm going to do something for the Torah, so I'm sure that Hashem is going to appreciate that. But if I'm going to do something for your sake, for the child of Hashem, I don't think that Hashem can describe His appreciation to me on doing that. If you're going to do that, so now I'm going to give you the recipe for your success. Remind yourself that you're also a child of the Creator and help that child. Help that child. There is no, no difference between you and me. It's not more important for you to help me or to help that person with the genes than to help yourself. If you're Litvish, if you're a Bez Belzer, if you're a Breslever, if you are a Mizrochi, if you're an Israeli, if you're American, if you're European, if you're old, if you're young, if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're a Jew, if you're a convert, if you're a non-Jew. I'm going to ask you, what's going to be the reward of a non-Jew that saved 3,000 Jews from the trains that are going to Auschwitz? What's going to be his reward? And you learned in the highest level of the best shul in, 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 in Lakewood, in Bora Park. Okay, so I'm asking you, and what's going to be his reward? And he's got lust for money, desire for money, lust for women. All of his life he's drinking whiskey and scotch and the best steaks in the world. And he's buying in thousands of dollars Cuban cigars. And that's his business. And he saved 3,000 Jews from Auschwitz. And today I'm going to tell you that from those 3,000 people, you have at least today... 2,000 huge families that are holding at least 70 people each. And they're learning in the highest classes in Lakewood. So now what's the importance of you compared to that non-Jew that is crazy on alcohol and Cubans? Can you understand the reward that he will receive in the world to come? Ah, he's not Jewish. You're crazy, not him. He's doing the best he can. He doesn't know better. He doesn't know better. He's just doing the best that he can. And when he had the opportunity, he jumped on that train. 
Now the question is if you're going to jump on that train. Were you risking your life for 3,000 Jews in the days of the Holocaust? Or that you would sell your skin and your brothers and sisters to save yourself? What would you do? In the same position, in the same situation, would you risk your life to save 3,000 Jews or three Jews or one Jew to hide him in your basement, in your backyard? Would you risk your life for a Jew? Would you risk your life? If your answer is yes, so it's amazing, I hear you. So you know how many Jews are standing in that line today waiting for you to rescue them? So rescue. So go and rescue. Like that I'm going and rescuing people on daily basis, go and rescue. Go and save souls. And it's not because I'm unique. I'm not unique, like I told you. Just Hashem had mercy on me. And He opened my eyes to see that I was in complete darkness. And He showed me, hey, there is a light. That was the whole story. That's how I decided to move from one side to the other. From dark side to the light. May the force be with Thank you very much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.